Hello friends, welcome to Electronic Circuit Hub. So today we are going to learn about the ramp generator circuit by using LT spice simulation. Okay. So it is also called sawtooth wave generator circuit. Okay. So I'll I'll explain this circuit, how this circuit works, and then later I'll run the simulation and I'll show you the ramp signals or sawtooth signals. Okay, so let us understand first how this circuit works. Okay, and how will you design this circuit, right? So let me explain. So you see here, I have used some resistor passive components that is resistors and capacitors. Then I have used a combo of NPN and PNP BJT. Okay. So this is very, very low cost circuit and you can see and here you can also see uh, it's combination of some passive components as well as some NPN and PNP VJT. Okay. So let us, let us look at from here. This is V1 that is voltage source V1 and you can see here this is Q1. This is P1. Uh, this is PNP Q1 that is BC856B, right? So this is P PNP BJT and you can see I have done some biasing for this PNP transistor, right? So you can see here the emitter of this PNP is connected to the resistance R3 and now you see here your base of this PNP transistor is biased with two resistance, okay? So basically this r1 and r2 is called the voltage divider biasing of or the potential divider biasing here you need to understand that how how this pnp transistor get turns on so this is very important to understand uh, if you don't know how this pnp transistor get turns on so once this pnp once this q1 is turns on then only it will charge the capacitors C1 and once the capacitor C1 is charged, you can see this both transistor like first, first like this, this Q2 conducts, once the Q2 conducts, then this Q3 conducts, right? So let me explain the flow, how this, uh, th these transistor gets turned on. This is very important to understand, right? So this is interdependent. This is all the transistor is not getting turned on at the same time, right? Because of some limitation. And you can see here at the end here, I have again the voltage divider here uh, to connect the, you see here the base of this Q2 and the, the collector of this Q3, okay? So what happens is if you see the biasing voltage here is one R1 is 1K and R2 is 10K and to turn on this transistor, this transistor Q1, you need to have the potential difference between emitter terminal of this Q1 and base terminal of this Q2 should be greater than 0 0.7. So if you see the six voltages is coming around it emitter and if you calculate the voltage divider here, you may find that I haven't guys, I haven't done any calculation, but I'm trying to explain you how this Q1 transistor get turns on. So if you, if you do some calculation, so that voltage across this base terminal will be 0 0.7 volt lesser than the voltage across this, this emitter terminal. Then one, then only this Q1 turns on. Once the Q1 turns on, there is a flow of current from emitter to collector. So there is a flow of current from emitters to source to this capacitor C1. Okay. So this capacitor C1 then gets charged by using the time constant of R3 and C1. So you can find the how much time this capacitor C1 will take to get a charge, fully charged. Okay, so this would be the six time constant, like 60. So once this C1 is again, again you see here, again one more PNP transistor is connected to the collector of this Q1 transistor. This is also PNP transistor, right? So once this uh, 
C1 is fully turned on and you can see again there will be a potential difference between this emitter terminal of Q2 and the base terminal of Q2. So on that case this Q2 turns on once this Q2 turns on this will supply this will supply the base current to the Q3 Q3 and then finally this Q3 turns on right so hope guys you have understood how these transistors are being turned on this is very important to understand here how this transistor is turns on once you know the flow of the flow of this circuit how this transistor is turns on then only you can understand the ram ram generator circuit behavior okay so first this q1 turns on once this q1 turns on it makes supply here c1 stores some energy then q2 turns on then once the q2 turns on this q3 turns on okay you see the voltage divider here okay so that is how that is how this this combination this transistor turns on and once this is turns on maybe this turns on this will take up the full this will discharge the c1 and once this c1 is discharged this q2 will be off this q3 will be off and again once the c1 will be charged once c1 gets fully charged again this q2 on and q3 are that is how by using this combination of npn and pnp transistor and by using some passive component here you can generate the sawtooth okay a ramp signal okay so now let me run the simulation and show you what is the output and what is how this circuit behaves how the ramp signals looks like right right so let me go at here let me tile window vertically here and you see let me do further zoom okay so so let me first show you the output okay so you can see here this is basically nothing but a pulse output if you zoom it right there is a, some pulse output it looks like that okay so so uh, this is the pulse output and let me click on here right now you see guys now you see here your ram signal okay let me change the color for this so now you see your ram signal guys okay it is the ram signal you can find the frequency of this ram signal also so what happens is you if you see here in this circuit i have i have measuring i am measuring the ram signal here at the emitter emitter point of q2 okay since this capacitor c1 charges and discharges it generates the ram signal and and it it generates the ram signal because this transistor q q2 and q3 turns on and off simultaneously you can see here how your ram signal is looks like right you can see here how the ram signal if you want to measure the frequency for this ram signal you can measure like uh, attached cursor here maybe one and two and you can measure the frequency for this ram signal right and you can also generate the by changing the capacitor value and rc time constant you can generate the different this is very low frequency it's a 176 hertz you see here okay so hope guys you have understood how will you de design a ram generator or sawtooth wave generator by using a simple passive component as well as a combination of npn and pnp transistor right if you have any further question feel free to ask me in comment section thanks for watching this video